Metal whiskers are thin wire-like structures that form from a metallic surface without any specific external trigger. The whiskers can be extremely thin, being only fractions of a micrometer thick, while reaching lengths of several millimeters. The whiskers can grow parallel to the surface, but can also grow perpendicular from the surface. The whiskering phenomenon was discovered in the 1940s by NASA on tin alloyed metallic part, which was an unexpected phenomenon that was linked to the formation of electrical shortcuts between connectors and wirings. As a result, a multitude of device failures occurred within the last 50 years, resulting from whisker formation. It was later discovered that whiskers can be exerted from various metals, not only on tin metals and alloys. The observations reveal that whiskers can grow from seconds to years, making the prediction of their formation that much harder and the mechanism of formation unclear. There are several theories that propose and explain the whisker formation, but a multitude of these theories fall short in explaining and predicting preferential nucleation sites for the whiskers formation. With our research we discovered the formation of pure lead whiskers that exert from the surface of a common machinable aluminum alloy that is alloyed with lead and bismuth. The whiskers and helix form specifically from the solid bismuth magnesium lead pools that are present in the microstructure as rounded and segmented phases due to the heat treatment procedure. The surprising features is their interesting and unique morphology that provide interesting new insights into how the whiskers grow and develop. In this example we see how the whiskers develop in a multiple crystal form with adjacently fused crystallites. The crystallites form as twins that is indicated by the striations that form in a mirror form. The next example provides evidence of their growth development from the surface of the pools. As can be seen they form a narrow neck from which the wider part is formed. It should be clear that such whiskers grow in a bottom-up fashion, meaning the material flows from the base of the pool towards the top of the whisker. Commonly, theoretical models and observations explain whiskers as only to form in narrow structures and that they do not form complex wider structures once whiskers are formed. In the next example, we see that after the growth of a whisker, a cuboidal structure growth at the base. Moreover, the structure is directly formed between the base and the whisker, indicating complex growth dynamics. From the testing of the whiskers, a multitude of different morphologies ranging from cotton ball-like structures to plate formations can be developed. Depending on the storage environment and stress state of the material. Additionally, also the whiskers can develop a specific hydroxide or oxide layer, depending on the oxygen concentration and humidity of the storage environment. With further investigation we come to the conclusions that the fused crystallites grow independently and usually grow in sequential manner as can be seen from this example. The new crystallites are guided by the primal crystallite and it is proposed that the growth occurs through detachment and fusion of the interface. Through local chemical analysis of the underlying pool, we confirm that the whiskers grow from the PB-rich regions. With this example we show that the whiskers grow from the lead regions, even when they are not directly exposed or open to the surface. In the sketch we show that the lead region expands with the internal pressure buildup and release the stress with the whisker growth. As the video shows, the whiskers and helix grow and expand in different manners from the same pool. With transmission electron imaging of the whiskers, we confirm the single crystal structure of the whiskers. However, the whisker caps or their initial growth stage shows an amorphous character, indicating a highly disordered state of the material within the pool that rearranges with the growth of the whisker. Additionally, we discovered that the narrower and highly ordered whiskers display a nanocrystalline structure, which can explain their accommodation of side-by-side -side growth into several larger single crystal-like structures. With further observations we confirm that the stress formed within the pools, resulting from the bismuth oxidation, is the main cause for the whisker formation. The correlative analysis of both whiskers and pools reveals the dramatic ordering and microstructural changes of the lead material. With all the data acquired thus far the mainstream theories cannot explain the specific morphology and growth of the whiskers. The nanoscopic origin of the whisker growth is revealed to be reformation of the lead region within the pools. Subdomains form due to pressure within the structure, causing remolding of the lead material and with it later growth of the whiskers. It is clear that the lead is separated and immiscible from the bismuth magnesium regions. The regions beforehand occupied by lead is later taken by the nanocrystalline formed bismuth magnesium nanocrystals. With in situ observations of the whisker growth, we unveil the specific growth behavior of the whiskers. 
The remarkable example, presented in the video, displays the clear growth of the whisker in a form of a plate that grows in a stepwise manner to release the build-up pressure, while also accommodating the surface energy changes. Note also that in the end the whole structure expands with time. With the in-situ measurements, we conclude that the whiskers can grow with astonishing growth bursts of up to 1.15 micrometer per second. To explain all the presented observations, we propose a model of oriented attachment that is based on the recrystallization theory of Ellis et al. The reformation of the material in the pool occurs through formation and fusion of nanocrystals. Due to the local differences in pressure the nanocrystals orient and growth together in monocrystal structures, which can remold and fuse together due to their subdomain construct. With our research, we come to the following conclusions.